Previously on MKR. MKR has always been about real food cooked by real people in their real home. We've traveled across the country. It'll be exciting. I'm excited. Oh my God, I feel like I'm going to make my new best friend here. <laughs> and met 12 teams of incredible home cooks. For me, food, it means everything. It's passion, it's love. Our family is everything to us. Bonsoir! We want to show them what we cook for our families. Exactly like my nonna's. Oh. My grandma taught me these recipes. <sighs> and while pressure... You've done this heaps of times before. What if today's the day that it doesn't go right? ...was always close at hand. Back on track or are you still angry with me? I'm not angry <laughs> with you at all. They delivered heart and soul into every single dish. Everything I hoped it would be and more. Just yum. Exactly what my kitchen room is about. Home cooking done well. But ultimately, two teams consistently impressed the judges. First, fine diners Kate and Mary's confident cooking. We need to be looking for eights, nines. Delivered a classic three-course menu. So good. Loves it. Oh, <laughs> wow. That was really beautiful. Oh. It fast-tracked them straight to the semi-finals. Come on! Then, dating couple Janelle and Monzir's Turkish and Sudanese flavours. We get to highlight both of our cultures. Bowl the judges over. My score is 10. The score I'm giving you is a 10. Yeah. I can't believe it. First two 10s of the season. In Kitchen HQ, the underdogs had to prove themselves again with a last chance fight. And I'm really nervous. To stay in the competition. I can't believe it. My whole life depends on a friggin' sponge cake. Wow, there is a lot of flavour. The team advancing to the semi final is Janelle and Monzia. In the semi finals, they joined Kate and Mary and two other teams. I'm not totally confident. To battle for a spot in the grand final. Oh no, Mary. My heart is beating so fast. This was amazing. This sauce is absolutely delicious. Both teams proving too good for the competition. Janelle and Monzer, your three course meal was the best of the night. Go team Monzer. And congratulations, Kate and Mary. Oh. To become MKR's grand finalist for 2022. It will be the most important cook of your life. I actually cannot believe that we made it to the grand final of MKR. This is the grand final. We've got a plan. We're totally serious. We want to take this out. It's really hard to make a living or to build a life when you don't have all the means to do so. To some people, 100,000 might not be a lot of money, but to us, this is the grandest prize that we've ever even come close to earning and winning. This means the absolute world to us. We are ready. We're ready to get it done. We're going to bring it to the grand final and we're going to win. in the balcony is just, is indescribable. It's lovely to be back in kitchen headquarters. We get to sit back and watch two great teams battle it out. This is the moment that we shine. At the end of the day, MCAR is a competition and there's only one winner. This is gonna be epic. This is it, the MKR Grand Final! <laughs> Tonight, one of you will be crowned MKR Champions and walk away with a life-changing $100,000. <laughs> Kate and Mary, how are you feeling? We're really, 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 really oh. pleased to be here. And very excited. Being away from um, my family who are up there, my baby, so a lot of mother's guilt. You know, my wife's been a single parent all through this time, so it's all been quite a lot, yeah. I think I've asked so much of them. It's very emotional, very emotional, and a bit teary. Um, 
I've realised that Kate and I actually can, together, we could do anything. Janelle and do you feel strong tonight? We're very strong, I think. Very much. I think we both have our heads in this game. We're going to give it everything that we have tonight. We have our families here, which is really beautiful. I'm actually meeting Monzi's family for the first time right now. Wow. Hello. Oh. Ahead of you is the toughest cooking challenge you've ever faced. You'll have to serve up a four-course menu, a degustation, an entree, a seafood course, a meat course, and finally, dessert. All 25 plates per course. So that's 100 plates in total. So you know what we're expecting a perfect four-course menu. Teams, your kitchens are ready. The first course must be served in two hours. Good luck to you both. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Head to your stations, because your time starts now. <laughs> Today we're going to be showcasing our cultural food, our heritage, keep it authentic to who we are as people and who we are as cooks. Go Kate, go Mary. Mary and I, we have meticulously planned this first part of the cook. We know what we're doing and we are ready. So for Andre we're making scampi. I am getting the ingredients out. For Andre we are cooking scampi with a smoky chilli oil, gazpacho and a fennel salad. Mary? Yep. They're all going to be cut in half. OK. Because we want to maintain the integrity of that meat. Scampi is a luxury seafood item. It is like a little baby lobster. It's a bit of a luxury for the judges and, and everybody that's going to be eating with us tonight. They have a very delicate, sweet flavour. Scampi is a high-risk ingredient, and we, and we knew that from the start. It is going to be hard to cook scampi. We do want to present ourselves on a plate in this grand final. We want to show a range of techniques. We are about very mm. simple food done beautifully and looking elegant. Kate and Mary has been consistent from the very beginning. You know, mm. like, they obviously did talk up a big game, but... They backed it up. They're, they backed it up. Oh, go, go, go. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. <laughs> So I'm going to start with the bread. Yep. And you're going to be starting on the Adana mix. I'm going to go to the store and grab our protein that we need. For entree, we are making grilled Adana with jajuk, sumac and onion salad and buzzlama. Adana is a spicy, sweet and tangy grilled meat. And buzzlama is a mixture between a pita bread and a flatbread. So essentially, our entree is kebabs. I feel like a lot of people will see kebabs as a casual kind of dining food. That's nothing special. But to us, it's special. It's a Turkish dish that I would probably have every Sunday. This is my mum's recipe. Monza's chopping skills are just oh my God. a badass chopper over there. Chopping those nice herbs. So now I'm putting all the spices inside the kifta mix. So the key ingredients we're putting in the Adana mix is the mince, parsley, We've got the eggs, the ice water, and the olive oil. That's the key ingredients. And then we've got the dry herbs on the side. Now I'm putting the pepper. Come on, Janelle. You can do it. We have to clean up. This is such a mess. Oh, for me, this cook is extremely nerve-wracking. So I think literally all the odds are against us. Our age, we're younger than most people, we don't have that much experience, and we're presenting just our family recipes that we cook and eat every day. I, I feel like I'm, I'm going into this pretty overwhelmed. Come on now! So we're going to Turkey with this entree, which is fantastic. Yeah. I think this, this uh, little uh, kebab, it's not a, a complicated recipe. It's all about the balance of the ingredients that you put into the mince. When they cook their food, it's dynamite. The meat is done, yeah? I'm gonna leave it here. Come on, Janelle, let's get it, girl. I am rooting for Janelle and Monzia because they are a young couple. They're people who are bringing their culture to the table. I am so proud.
I would love to see Mons and Janelle walk away with that hundred thousand dollars because it would make such a difference mm. to their futures. It would be in mm. an incredible start for them. Marriott. Yep. That is twenty-five. Scampi finished. And now we can pop them aside until we're ready to cook those scampi. I've got to do my gazpacho okay. and then griddle those babies, do the salad and we're kind of OK. For me, I think Mary and Kate have probably got it tonight just because they've got decades of experience on Janelle and Monzi. And I think, you know, when it comes to the crunch, 100 plates of food, all of that pressure, that sort of stuff really counts. So we'll see. Are you starting on the judgic now, Mons? Yep. Jajik is also going to be served with our entree and it's like a Turkish dip. It's something that you would always have as an accompaniment for barbecued meats. Go, Mons! Teams, this is the grand final and you've got one hour left before entree. Come on, guys, let's go! This is it for real, come on! I reckon these tomatoes are looking nice and ripe for this gazpacho for our entree. So the gazpacho is just that cold soup. It's just a blending up of fresh ingredients, so tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, garlic. And it should be well chilled and bring a, just a lightness to the whole dish. Oh, hi, look, Mia! Look! Hi, go, Mum! Go, Kate! Go, Mary! We love you! You got this! Your legs look skinny in those pants, Mum. <laughs> There's something really amazing about people who know and love you watching you kind of achieve something important. That really was a big deal for me. It's missing this, sherry vinegar, and a lovely sprinkle of salt. Mary and I are literally on red alert for our seasoning for the grand final. It is the thing that we do not want to receive any negative feedback. Yum. Both happy with it. That gazpacho is velvety and we're happy with seasoning. We pop it in the fridge and it's ready for plating up. How are you going with the skewers? Going pretty good. For screwing the dana, you need uh, special techniques and skills to screw it. It's just like this kind of motion where you're kind of pressing your fingers into it to create mm. some sort of a pattern, and it kind of helps you stick to the flat iron skewer. If Monzi hasn't skewered those adanas perfectly, the adana meat could fall off the skewer. If he cooks them for too long, they might dry out, and if he doesn't cook them long enough, they might be undercooked. Go, Monzi! Go, Mel! Look at God! You're quite messy today. Yeah. Don't cook them to death. No, no, no. I'm happy with the grill, babe. It's good. That's good, that's good. I'm happy. So I've just started with the scampi for our entree. The biggest thing I want to do is make sure that they get enough heat each and they don't start to stew. So I'm just going to put four on each. They've had a little brush with the with the oil. I am watching them like a hawk. The risk of, of cooking a scampi is because they're so delicate, because there's not a lot of meat in that shell, as soon as you overcook them, they become chalky. So it's really critical that we cook them perfectly. Hey, Mary, can you just have a quick another look? Yeah, I think you'd rather under than under. Yeah, and they're going to keep going. I will be slightly undercooking them on the grill um, because I know that they're going to continue to cook when I pop them on the plate through the heat in the shell. So I'm just going to need the bread for the buzzlama, which is for the entree. Mum, the bread looks OK. Yes! It looks amazing now. Yay! Yay! Is it a wise choice to serve a flatbread? 25 guests. They gotta be consistent, you know? Like the first few might be nice. Don't wanna give your mother in law raw bread, yeah. Okay, so we've done the bread, the sumac salad's done, the jajik is done for the entree, and you're doing the meat, and the pepper is also done. Almost ready to plate once both the bread and the adana are cooked. I'm halfway through making these buzzlamas, and I didn't realize how long this was going to take. I think I'm regretting being too ambitious and trying to put two buzzlama on the plate. Monty, how's the meat going? The meat is almost done. It's gonna be in time. It's okay, be done okay, in time. okay. I'm gonna be grilling these buzzlamas right up until the last second to get every single one on the plate. Maybe so I'm hoping the meat it becomes nice, cooked, well done inside, and it's juicy. 
That's what we want. Take it off the heat because it's going to still keep cooking. Yeah, I know. Yeah? Look over the bench and see Janelle losing her mind. She's <laughs> so stressed. So I'm going to wrap it up for you, so keep the heat, don't, yeah? Don't, don't, don't. Okay, drop the heat inside. Don't, because it, it will overcook. Don't. It's not going to be overcooked. Just don't. We are only just starting our first course of the grand final and I'm already losing my mind. It's not a good start. How are you going with the bread? The bread is still cooking. I just, just, come on. Monzi, Yo. when you're finished, clear that bench. That's where we're plating. OK, sweet. Done. Monzi, just leave it. Just leave yeah, it. It I'll can be done later. Yeah. Just clean up. Clean up. 20 minutes. Let's go. I think they look good. Yeah, I think they look good too. I have just finished the scampi. They look fabulous. They look pretty good. And then heard people screaming from the mezzanine. There's, there's another tray. There's another, there's another tray, tray of scampi. Three, just at the back. We're all counting them out. It doesn't look like there's enough. What the hell is going on? It's like, Kate! Kate! I don't know how I missed that whole tray of scampi. There's actually nine that are still just sitting on the bench. <sighs> Kate and Mary, I, I was starting to think, maybe they're not as cool-headed as I believe. Yeah. It, mm. It's adding layer upon layer of pressure. Kate and Mary, they really look scared. We would have just had to give people half if that had happened, of course. I'm looking at the scampi, I'm looking up at the clock. The scampi is the hero of the dish and has to be perfectly cooked. I mean, it's the grand final. What the hell? How did I forget about nine of my babies? Tens, your first course needs to be ready in ten minutes! Let's go! I am trying so hard not to look up at that clock because it's gonna freak me out, but I feel like we're losing time. Monty, please! Yeah, Monty. yeah I got you, I got you. So I think the biggest issue with our entree is me. My stress levels and the pressure that I was feeling was really bleeding out into the atmosphere and uh, causing us to have a little bit of tension. You're not listening. I am, I am. Janelle, she's very sassy. She'll say what she needs to say, even with everybody watching above. Janelle and Monzi are a very passionate couple. So there's a lot of passion in the kitchen, but that's why the food is good. Off, 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 off. We have just finished cooking the scampi. I'm really worried that, you know, they're not going to be cooked to perfection or are they going to go over because they're going to keep cooking in the shells. I just need to, I know I'm going to okay. olive oil and see, okay. season them all and then I'll move them out sure. of the way. Thank you. No. Two. Four. Now, we've got two things we could do. We could put the oil on top of the gazpacho or I can just do a little drizzle around there. Kate and Mary are cool as cucumbers. They're methodical. They just get on with it. They are unfazed by anything. <laughs> I think they have very um, calm demeanours that really helps them in the kitchen. That's looking good. I'm going to start putting them on. Oh. Liars. Plating is always, always stressful. Once you've put all those out, yes. I'll put this bread over here. You put two on each plate, OK? Yeah, go, yeah, go. Starting to put the buzzlama on the plate. We're serving two buzzlama per plate. You need more bread? And I realise we're a few short. I didn't make enough buzzlama. You only three more breads, three more, three more. Turkish food is about generosity. I want to serve two buzzlama per mm. plate. Should I put the How squares? much? How much? Three more, three more, three more plates. I meant three more bread. Cooking these last buzzlamas is literally like watching paint dry. It's excruciating. When are they going to cook? I was definitely worried that my stress levels were going to show on our entree. We love you now. Buzzlama for the entree. Done. That's good, that's good. I'm happy. This is the MKR Grand Final. You've got five minutes left. Come on. Put the meat. Put the meat on this one. I'm being as loud as I can be loud. Presentation is probably not everything. It's got to taste it's good. It's got to taste good. I look over at Kate and Mary's entree and it looks so fine dining. 
Presentation is important. It's just hard to do that with these dishes, isn't it, babe? Because yeah. our dishes are quite rustic. Tim's got 30 seconds! Come on, guys, let's go! OK, does everybody have one? Yeah. Clean the plate a little bit. Clean the plate. Finesse, finesse. Two, nine, eight, seven, six, Tray looked a little bit messy. I feel like I'm probably to blame for that. My stress levels and the pressure really got to me, and I hope that I can change my mindset and get into a better groove in the next course. <laughs> You're teary too. We love you. She's okay. <laughs> She's okay. I don't think we had ever anticipated how oh. much it would mean for us that our family could see us cook. Never. Well, first dish of the grand final, here he comes. Excited. This is a beautiful dish. This is us on a plate. It's a great start. Fabulous, thank you. It's nice. It's very mm. simple. It sort of like, you know, it doesn't linger on the palate. Yeah. Quite delicious. Mm. Don't really taste this much, eh? Scampi's cooked well. Yum. <laughs> that was delicious. What do you think about the gazpacho being served on the side? I would have actually served it on the bottom. Look at that. Perfectly cooked scampi. Yeah. Look, just a little bit of translucent there. It's still got a, lots of moisture in there. It's a very clean mm. entree, isn't it? Yeah. When you're serving a multi-course meal, it's very important that you give your place yourself somewhere to go. Yeah. All right, let's try uh, Jenny Le Monde's dish. Yes. I feel like flavor-wise, our entree is strong. We eat those flavours every single day. We try to stick to our heritage and our roots and what we're proud of. Thank you. I have been busting to okay. try this one. Mm. Yeah, that yoghurt dressing. I thought that's so simple, but it's actually delicious. It's really yum. So much flavours. There's so many layers of flavour. Mm, I really like that sweet, tangy. Yeah, that's delicious. Wow. <laughs> little kick. This is explosion of flavours, isn't it? It's a play of textures. There's all sorts of spices, bold flavours. This is a strong start. They're out of the gates fast. I think there's one of our teams just slightly in front. I think General Monzia is one up for me. It's like a point between each other, I would say. Teams, time to get back to the kitchen, please. So, General Monzia, right now, you're a little bit ahead. Oh. Teams, your seafood course needs to be ready in 90 minutes, and your time starts now. Let's go! We're going to start getting onto the sides of salmon for our fish course. For our seafood course, we are cooking crispy skin salmon with a fragrant Thai sauce and some flatbread. Were you surprised with that result? Um, I was a little bit. I'm going to use that as more of a motivating thing than anything else. There is so much riding on this seafood course because we didn't think we were behind in the entree until we knew we were behind in the entree. So we're really not feeling confident at all. Monzi, what are you working on? No, I'm cleaning the prawns, yeah? Monzi is taking the little icky pups out. I was good. <laughs> taking I was... care of the prawn poo. I was getting the nasty job. For the seafood course, we're doing clayfi prawns with halloumi and watermelon salad. I'm just going to wrap the prawns in some of the kadaifi pastry. So we chose to do the prawn dish today because I think it's probably our favourite seafood that we eat together. And I love the use of the kadaifi on the prawn. It's something that we use mainly for desserts as a crispy texture. I'm just going to start 
start making that thyme infused ladna for our dessert. It's nearly like a, a nice little yogurt cheese. It's gorgeous. We're going to add the herb thyme, infuse it in there in our dessert course. We're going to get onto the kaimak and honey ice cream for dessert. Kaimak and honey are going to be featured in the ice cream. Kaimak is Turkish clotted cream. I'm going to just whiz up these egg yolks and sugar for the anglaise. Make sure it's nice and fluffy. I'm doing the ice cream now, so we've got enough time to pour and churn. I'm going to just set these over here, and I'll put them in the ice bath in a second. Teams go one out to go and leave nothing a chance. Come on. Is there any more watermelon? Yeah. Is that one a good one? Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Looking at the salad, which is the halloumi and watermelon, mm. it's going to be salty and sweet. I'm actually really excited for that. So, trying to get the halloumi nice and golden. I'll get the groom marks on. Yeah. So I learned about the combination of halloumi and watermelon from my family. That's kind of like a national summer dish. Watermelon, it's got that little bit of sweetness, and halloumi is a firmer texture, but it's creamy and salty. So I feel like this combination is something I'm confident with. So I'm happy with the, uh, with the halloumi. Got yeah, that nice green really marks. Oh, they look beautiful. I'm going to cut them up into cubes and put them on the side. Yeah. The Janelle and Monsieur's dish, if you look, they're, they're already frying them. Halloumi. And we all know, like, halloumi, you want to eat it when it's out of the pan and it's hot, it's warm, and it's, like, sort of melting. Mm. Because what's it like when it goes cold? It goes squeaky. You know, the, the thing is, is when you're not used to cook for so many people. Yeah, right. And you're worried yeah. that you're going to run out of time. You start cooking things too early. Babe, get them prawns on the thing. I am really struggling with managing my time right now. There's just so much to do and so little time. I need to finish wrapping those prawns and then deep frying them. Babe. I'm gonna do it in two minutes, okay? I feel like the seafood course is Kate and Mary's to win. They love working with seafood. They know how to work with seafood. I have not deep fried many prawns in my lifetime. It was something that I was stressed about because the prawn is the most important thing on that plate today. It's a seafood course. If we fail at that prawn, we failed the seafood course. OK, prawns are all covered. My opinion, honestly, is just that that prawn is going to be stunning. Yeah. You know, Kate and Mary are going to have to do a lot to catch up. The pressure is on. There is just 30 minutes to go. Come on. So for our seafood course, I've got a lot of salmon to get through. And we want them to be just pink in the middle. So I'm just going to mainly do them on this side. The title of the dish is crispy skin salmon. So if that skin is not crisp, I've got a problem. If we don't nail every single element, this could be it. I think the big risk is definitely the 25 portions mm. of crispy skin on the salmon. Yeah. With Kate and Mary, my big concern is they've started their salmon way too early. It might dry out and might make the skin less crisp. 15 minutes to go. Come on! Let's go, teams. Come on! Righto. Look, the salmon is looking pretty good. I think we've got the crispy skin. OK, so we're going to put them in for two minutes and hopefully that's just going to finish off the bottom of these. I'm going to pop it into the oven and I'm going to take the time to make sure that they're all perfectly cooked. Salmon's got in the oven. Oh, oh no way. It's too early. I'm under a fair bit of pressure with this salmon. I mean, it's the grand final. The salmon has to be perfectly cooked. Trouble is, there isn't a set time to put the salmon in the oven. It depends on how much it's already cooked through. The next issue is I've never cooked 25 pieces of salmon in a row. I don't want to overcook them, but I also want to make sure that they're at least cooked. So I take them out of the oven. I think the salmon was testing him. I really felt for Kate when that was happening. She seemed to have lost that confidence in, in cooking it. Right, Mary, so they've just had two minutes and they're not quite Kate. done. They're not quite right. No, they need no, another... no, 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 leave them. It's got to sit in some hot sauce. Yeah, OK. Feed them. No, if you don't fry the prawns, we're not going to have a main. OK. I 
have not deep fried many prawns in my lifetime. It was something that I was stressed about. This is the scariest course for me of the entire four course meal. With the kadaifi on the prawn, I'm not going to know if these prawns are over or undercooked until the judges have tasted it. I think the danger of the dish is cooking the kataifi on the outside, not too much, and then cooking the prawns in the inside. But I'm just making sure that it's on like an even temp because um, I just don't want the prawns to be unevenly cooked. If it's unevenly cooked, it's going to be overcooked in some areas and undercooked, and I just want it to be crispy everywhere. Ten minutes, team! Ten minutes! Okay, Kate, we can plate up. I just want to get start putting salmon on. I'm going to bring them over. I want you to have a look at them. I reckon they could do with one minute. I'm backing Kate. I am not going to stand and argue with Kate about the salmon. I think if she's going to overcook that salmon, I was worried. I looked at the salmon. Some of them definitely need to come out of the oven. Tell me when what these ones are done. I'm just any ones that I know are done, they're going straight on. But I knew there were some of them that still needed a little bit longer. And I put them back in the oven. That salmon she was cooking in the oven, out of the oven, and I was like, what? Precious. What is going yeah. on? You're already done. Okay, okay. That's it. All right. I want to put the base out soon. The prawns looked beautiful, golden, crispy, but with my lack of experience with seafood, I just didn't know if it was over or undercooked. Let's go, Neil. Let's go. Yes. Kate was still playing with her salmon, and I was actually trying to get these elements on the plate. It was a very stressful time. I hope you're ready, because you have just one minute to go. Let's go. <laughs> This is looking very dodgy. What? We just need to clean up the plates a bit. I'm like mopping up that sauce. I think presentation, we've presented it better in the past, but we know the flavours are there. It's just um, a bit of a mess. Let's go put them on the plate. Just put them on. You gotta take that plate on, I'll take that one. If the prawns are overcooked, it's gonna be ruined. I don't know. Is it overcooked, undercooked? I feel like it's overcooked. Ten. I'm sure my mum's really proud. Our dish looks pretty good, but for me, it's all about that prawn. It's a lot better. I mean, it's got crispy skin. There is some flatbread on it, so that's good. <laughs> the pressure of the grand final certainly rattled me. I've never cooked under that sort of pressure, but you have to pick yourself up. Well, one course down, it's a pretty close race. Janelle and Lonzi are just in the lead. Should we try the second course? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. This is Janelle and Monzia's second dish, which is kataifi prawn with halloumi and watermelon salad. I don't know if that prawn is overcooked or undercooked. We just don't know if this seafood course is going to be good enough for the judges. All right. Look at the size of this prawn. I'm very excited. Bon appétit. It's a bloody banger. It's still crispy. Mm. You know, the, the, the crispness that they've achieved here and the cook on the prawn is really wonderful. Also, the seasoning is just spot on. Look at that prawn. Cooked perfectly. But you know, the difficulty of cooking the kataifi until it's nice and golden without overcooking a prawn. With either over or undercooking yeah, a prawn, it's, it's magical. I do have one issue. I love the watermelon and the freshness, right? But the halloumi, as it's cooled, sort of doesn't add anything to the dish. It's a really nice dish. A couple of faults, yes, but at the end of the day, it's still a very good dish, especially that prawn. Should we try the other one? Yeah. So. Next up, we've got Kate and Mary's crispy skin salmon with a fragrant Thai sauce and flatbread. 
we think we've done a pretty good yeah. job. But to be honest, we know we need to absolutely nail it. That's beautiful. The flavours in the um, curry are so... They all go very well together. It's really, really nice. Yeah, I love that. That sauce I know, is so, so good. good. Look at that. Blushing pink in the middle. Perfect. It's perfectly cooked. Perfect. But, you know, if she had left it in the oven for too long, it would have been gone. Banging. What a dish. That's a little explosion in the mouth, isn't it? And Moist. The skin is crispy. And the bread as well. I'm very impressed. It looked a little bit haphazard, but the flavour, Whoa. 10 out of 10 on that. Gentlemen's they were a little ahead. I think that Kate and Mary are back on track. On level, me. level, level playing field to me, mate. James, back to the kitchen, please. is done, two courses to go, and let me tell you, the race is very close. It's neck and neck. You've got 90 minutes for your third course, and your time starts now! I'm gonna start re getting ready for the meat course. I'm gonna chop the meat and get the okra ready. Okay. For the meat course, we are serving mm. Sudanese beef and okra stew with kisra, turshu, and shata. The kisra is fermented Sudanese bread. Turshu is just some pickled veg, and shata is a spicy, fresh chili sauce. I'm just gonna boil the water for you. Okra and beef stew is very important to me because it's my mom's favorite dish and it's her personal recipe. Pretty sure mom is gonna be the toughest critic today. I think that the judges are gonna love this dish. I think that it's different, but it's traditional, and we're gonna just stick to tradition and authenticity, and that's it. So the main risk with this dish is, I think that maybe the judges are used to a very slow cooked curry that has to be braised for hours and hours until the meat is falling apart. So I'm not sure if the judges are going to like the way that we're cooking the beef. I don't know if they're used to having beef that's not soft and tender. I have a question. So the, the, they are actually using brisket. Yes, and that's where the problem is because they only got 90 minutes mm. to cook this and it's not even on the stove yet. We've got white um, and brown onions there. This meat dish, this is the height of our, our bigness, you could say, in our menu. There's two cuts of lamb on the plate. We're showcasing an ingredient. And we're trying to show technique here. For the meat course, we're serving lamb, grain, and salsa verde. Mary, I yes. was just having, I, I think, I think I've made a bit of a mistake. I've got us into a bit of a predicament. I made a mistake cutting up all those cutlets because I think it's gonna be extremely difficult to achieve consistency cooking 25 individual lamb cutlets. Lamb racks should make that so much easier. I, I'm gonna go and have a look in the in the pantry now and see how many racks we've got. We don't have any spare racks, then we're gonna be in a bit of a pickle. Okay, okay. Kate again is looking very flustered. She's second guessing herself. I did worry and think, uh oh, you know, have they you know stuffed it here? It's the difference between cooking three or four racks in the oven versus watching 25 individual cutlets. Yeah, so they've only got two racks left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got 16. So we don't have enough racks to just do all racks of lamb for 25 people. But I think we're going to use these and we're going to pick out the best ones of those. Yep. And we're going to make do. Yeah, so we're actually going to use a mixture of the lamb rack and the lamb cutlets I've already cut. It's going to bring quite a few challenges with cooking it consistently. But at the end of the day, at least everybody gets a lamb cutlet on their plate. The risk is it's not going to look the same on the plate. But, but I think it's all going to be delicious. All of the elements are going to be on the plate. I think we, I think we, we need to go to... with our gut, yeah. you know? Trust your gut, girls. Trust your gut. If we pick out the really thick cutlets, we can cook them still singly and we can trim them so they still look pink in the centre, like the rack. If you can just try and trim those down to all the same thickness, Kate. There's oh, lots yeah. of lamb over there that, you know... Well, Come I wonder what's girl. happened to And it. she's cutting Looking more lamb up. I know. I'm going to do a bit of smoke and mirrors and make sure that they look the same. And, like, try and serve everyone the same dish. 
Oh, gosh, what are they doing? She's cut all these cutlets, not cut one rack, she's cut the other <laughs> rack. Something's gone awry in her brain. At this point, I'm kind of not really sure what more we can do. It's not ideal for a grand final dish, but it's the best we can do. I feel like, you know, I have let the team down a little bit because I was very, very hasty cutting all those cutlets up, and now it's actually going to probably ruin the look of the dish. So we're getting a roast sort of rack of lamb, or are you? Because you might have a roast cutlet of lamb. A lot at stake. That's a risk. It is. Come on, come on, Beef, I put black pepper, I put vegetable, salt, uh, um, cinnamon sticks, bay leaves, or the, bar the bar bar yes. bar, all the stuff. Seven spice? The seven spice. The most important spice that we had was the buhar. It's a blend, yes, from Ethiopia or Sudan. So I'm putting the chili flakes. So basically today I'm going to be emptying the whole spice shelf into the stew. But I saw you yeah. measuring spices with your hands. Yeah. That really stressed me out. That's how my mum would do it. Bonjour. How are you, buddy? Not bad. OK, so what's for main course, buddy? Uh, we're doing a uh, Sudanese yeah. beef with uh, okra. It's from my mum's favorite recipe, so. It's your mother's recipe? Yes, my mother's is she, recipe. Is she looking? Yep. Is he doing OK? Yeah, OK. <laughs> you, you tell me, yeah? I'll, yep. I'll fix him. OK. <laughs> So, yep. um, what kind of beef are you using? I'm using brisket. Uh, brisket? Yeah, brisket. Brisket. Yeah. brisket so, beef. quite tough, so it needs to be stewed for a long time, so it's tender. Yep. You want a t really tender meat? Uh, not really tender. You're just going to have a little, little bite on it. So, you're going to, like, a bit... oh, you like to chew yeah. on, the, yeah, on, so, on the So, on yeah, the and how we eat it with, we eat it with the kisra as well. So, I'm going to be making kisra later. So, it's like a... Kisra? Yes, yeah, so it's like a thin bread. OK, yeah. a flat bread. Yeah, flat bread, yeah. And then you, you tear it and then you tear it, yeah. it with your hands. You eat it with your hands, yeah. And where's, where's the bread? Have you made it yet? Uh, I made the dough for it. It's sitting inside the oven. Oh, so, yeah. uh, to, to be... Can, yeah, to can be I fermented. go and have a look at it? Yeah, for sure. Hi, darling, how are you? Hello, I'm good, I, thank I'll, you. I'll speak to you. Is that the, is that the bread here um, somewhere? Yeah, it's just in there. Oh, is it... Oh, is it it's uh, meant to be fermented. OK, cool. So, and then it ferments, and then that's how it rises. That's how it has the little bubbles when you cook it, yeah. So did, did uh, Manzi taught you how to make this bread, or you...? It is, yeah. Manzi taught me how to make it. It's his mum's recipe. Fabulous. <laughs> Get on with it. Yes. Good luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have you got those ovens at the temps you want them? I've got all of those on 165 for my tarts. For our dessert, we are cooking a lemon tart with some thyme-infused lavender and candied lemon. I've got the pastry out of the fridge for our dessert. Hey, Kate, so I'm just rolling out this pastry. It's just a little bit cold at the moment. This pastry is crucial. We're going to get this pastry into the tins and get them filled before the end of this course. They won't set. Well done, Mary. Okay, I'm going to turn this up, this bottom one up to 180. Teams, it seems like you've still got a lot to do. You've got one hour left. Let's go. One hour? One hour? Okay. I'm just going to get my sugar syrup on for our dessert. We are making baklava with kaimak ice cream and candied walnuts. I made the anglaise for the ice cream during our last course because you have to ensure that your anglaise is so, so chill before you even put it into the ice cream churner. OK, I'm going to put the ice cream on to churn now, Monty, for our dessert. And then I'm going to work on my baklava for dessert. Yep, perfect. So I'm going to just make my baklava filling now for the dessert for tonight. So I'm using walnuts and pistachios today. So baklava is made with lots of thin layers of phyllo pastry. You make your nut filling, then you bring out your phyllo pastry and you brush each sheet with melted butter. You will then add like a thin layer of the nut mix, then you roll that up using a wooden rod. You'll then repeat that process and roll it all together and then we just scrunch it really softly and gently all together and then you just push it into the tin. And that's it. I'm estimating like another four or five and I'm done. You do it better than I do. I did last night in my dream. <laughs> I'm going to put the baklava in the oven during our dessert course. No, I love you. The baklava is the best. Dessert queen. Wow, dessert queen and bamya king. Sounds so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys! Come on! OK, Kate, got the other stock on to reduce. 
Thank you, Eric. With this lamb dish, we actually just boiled the grains in some water before our meat course, but we didn't quite cook them right through. So we can just finish the grains off in that big reduced, strong stock. Kate's just lovingly just massaging that lamb, so it's just going to be perfect. I've got these babies rendering their fat down a bit. So I was browning the lamb racks. I think they're looking OK. Getting some nice colour. But my biggest concern was the lamb cutlets. Mm. Take a breath, Kate. I'm just, I made a little rack. I'm just doing a bit of rendering on that skin. Somehow, I have to get them to a point where they sort of look the same as the lamb rack when I cut them all into cutlets. Oh, they've got to get that the lamb stressing right. me out. Yeah, me I'm, too. Just <laughs> I'm really stressed about the lamb. I have made my job a little bit more difficult for myself today. I'm so worried about Kate and Mary's lamb. How they were going to achieve consistency there I, is anyone's guess. Lamb, 450 yeah. ways. <laughs> Our grand final, it is the third course. We've got a Sudanese beef stew up against lamb cooked two ways. Mm -hmm. This is the last savory course. It's going to be really interesting to see who comes out on top. I have made my job a little bit more difficult for myself today. For the meat course, we're serving lamb, grain and salsa verde. I think that there is a little bit of a lesson there. Originally, I was thinking, oh, I'll just cook all the racks at the same time. Now I've created a new problem where I've got the racks cooking, which were obviously bigger and they're going to need a lot longer time. And then I've got all of these chops that are different sizes. The biggest risk now is that those cutlets then get overcooked. I browned off all of that lamb. I'm going to put it in to the oven at 45 minutes. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> For our meat course, we are cooking Sudanese beef and okra stew with kisra, turshu and shata. Let's get the okra done. Come on, boy. Let's get the okra done. With the okra, mm. it can't be undercooked because if okra is undercooked, it's going to have too much bite to it. Mm. But it can't be too soft or else it's going to go really slimy. I'm putting the, the lemon now, so it's not, they're not slimy, yeah? So lemon juice. I'm going to get the ice cream into the freezer. I think this was probably the best we've ever worked together. We're on separate benches, I'm doing my own thing, Monzi's doing his own thing. We're working so well, apart. I'm really happy with the ice cream, Monzi. I'm just zesting the lemons for the dessert because I really need to get that lemony, lemony zing into our tart. For our dessert, we are cooking a lemon tart with some thyme-infused labda and candied lemon. I actually probably wasted so much time with lamb cutlets. I've got to zest 14 lemons. Juice 14 lemons. I wish I'd got the automatic juicer out. Separate 15 egg yolks. Whilst I could focus completely on the lemon curd, Mary had everything else going. That's my heart shell, Kate. I'm just going to get them out. We need to put the lemon curd in the tart shells in this part of the cook to give the best chance to set so we have a perfect dessert. I'm going to start the kisra now. So the kisra is my mom's recipe. <laughs> it's my time to make the kisra. I prepped this kisra dough batter in our entree time. Maybe I'll let it heat up for a bit more. I'm like psyching myself up for this. His mum's standing right there, she's watching. Monzi's mm. relying on me because he's taking care of three pots of beef and okra stew. Mm -hmm. And it's my time to shine. It's a real art form to make kisra. It's all in the wrist. You gotta make sure it's nice and thin. Look, look at the wrist. Literally. How going there, Janelle? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming along. Sorry? It's coming along. I'm Perfect. trying, I'm trying. Oh, it's Just keep oh, it's lifting, it's lifting. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, look at you. Where's your mum? Ask her if that's correct. Good. Yeah, good. That's the way. Oh. That's good, that's oh. really good. The lamb, check the lamb. Now it was time for us to focus back onto the lamb dish. Yep, she's onto the lamb. Go, Kate. Go, Mary. <laughs> 
starting to move along as Mary and I had planned. Time is on that lamb cake. Every minute counts mm. if we want to get to the end of this competition and win. It's a bit odd the way you've got the racks and the cutlets in the same tray. Yeah, I mean, like the it's racks a lot longer to cook. It's different cooking times, everything. And it just shows nervous and second guessing and, you know. The pressure is on for me to make this kisra and make it correctly. With my mum watching, I told you. It's the first day I've met her and I'm already making, attempting to make one of her recipes. That's the best way to, you know, to... To impress, I guess. Well, she goes, is your hand burning? Yeah? <laughs> she goes, you're doing a really good job, though. <laughs> so if your hands are burning, it's good. Yep. <laughs> I'm working two or three pans. That's not an easy job at all. All I actually wanted to do was pay respect to Sudanese cuisine, and I wanted to make Monzi proud, and I wanted to make his family proud. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, it will. <laughs> I'll actually have a look at those cutlets. The lamb necks resting, sitting in their own stock, but that lamb rack is still not ready, and I know that it needs rest time. They need to be cooking for a little bit longer. If we don't rest the lamb, of course, when I cut into it, that beautiful juice is just going to leak out everywhere. Oi! Nah. James got 15 minutes left. It's time to start planning. <laughs> so now I'm planning the okra, yeah? All right, you plate. You can do it, it's OK. So let's walk through the plating. You're gonna put the grains there. Yeah, yep. Tiny spoonful. Yep. Yep. Then you're gonna put the neck in the middle of yep. it. Yep. And then we're gonna have our this cutlets. We have to get this dish looking great on this plate, mm. but we need that lamb out of the oven. When I took the lambs out of the oven, I tested the temperature. Yeah, we might have a bit of an issue here. That one's only 49, yeah. One of them was slightly under. I didn't have any time. I need them cooked to perfection. <laughs> I'm really stressed about the lamb. Oh, 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 get the kisra, get the kisra, fold it. Get the kisra, fold it. I've got it. Fold the kisra, fold the kisra. It was absolutely chaos during plating time for the meat course. I've got my lamb necks out. Lamb necks looking good, actually. It's nice and tender. I'm going to slice it. We're making that conscious decision to actually not rush the plating. We've got the circle of the grains, and then I'm putting that lovely circle of the neck in the middle. Go, 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 go. Get the shaka, hurry up. Get your pickles on the plate. Put the shaka on the plate. On the side, Martha. Put, put it on the seat. Yeah, do the pickles when you finish with the pizza. I'm just stop looking at everything. No, look at everything. Stressing yourself up. You're stressing me out. I've got the two racks and I've got the cutlets. The first rack of lamb, I cut into it. Pretty happy with that. And it is perfect. So far, so good. And I am praying to the lamb gods that this is how they all are. Beautiful cake. Guys, those yeah, ones yeah, are... Yeah, perfect cake. Thanks. The next one I do is I look at all my little cutlets. I sort of trim them up so that they look like the rack, and then in the middle, it actually looks like the other ones. I've got my last rack. Mary, these pit ones in the middle are a bit pink. Just serve them up, Kate. They're not medium rare. I would say that they're rare. Come on, girls, you're nailing there. More of this, more, more of this. More, more, You put coriander on everything? Yep. No, you haven't. Amazing. I'm looking at her mum from the top and she's giving me a thumbs up. She's like, pretty really good. Let them know we were both happy. So I feel like we're back in game. Is it good? 
The dish is looking lovely. We know the flavours are good. Mm. But as everyone stopped cheering... Oh, no, we're there. We could hear the whirring of the mix master. We hadn't got that lemon curd in the tart shells. We hadn't got that lemon curd in the tart shells. I'm really confused about what I'm going to do with this tart. In the fury of plating up, I had forgotten about the lemon curd. I'm not sure what we do this. Take it off and leave it on the bench. I know that I have got a problem. I feel like at this point, I have let the team down a little bit. Ooh, that looks good. So this is Kate and Mary's lamb, grains and salsa verde. We did justice to that lamb dish. Yeah. And I think that, for me, was really important. There's hope there. Wow, ours is actually cooked really well. The flavours of everything together taste really good. It's a perfect texture. It's a risk to do two different types of cooking on the same plate. But if you can get it right, it can really set you apart from the pack too. It's a great sort of mop up that sauce. It's really, really well executed. The salsa verde is it's really so divine. <laughs> <laughs> you like it. Let's try Janelle and Monzi's Sudanese beef and okra stew. We know that Kate and Mary are fabulous cooks. I hope that we've done enough. We need to eat with our hands, apparently. I mean, this is a pretty plate of food, you It guys. is. Full of colour. It's very Chili bright. sauce, pickles, beef and okra. Dig in. This dish is is bloody fantastic. It's a little bit tough, but given the time they cooked it, it's understandable. All right. All right. Yeah, it's good. The beef, it's just, it's not soft, but it's not tough. That's right, which is exactly what Munzia wanted. Mm. There's deep character in that spice. You can taste lots of the different spices. I love this dish. Do you know what I want after this? I want to go to Monzi's mom's house for dinner. Me too. Tell you what, for me, on this course, it's Janelle and Monty. I put them in front. They're both amazing dishes in different ways. I'm a, for me, it's neck and neck. It's all down to desserts. It matters so much right now. It sure does. Are you proud of Monty? The part of music? Yeah. Yeah. I really am proud of him. He's done so well. Teams, back to the kitchen for desserts. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> James, you're now in the home straight. You have one hour to bring us your fourth and final course dessert. Your time starts now. For our dessert, we are cooking a lemon tart with some thyme-infused lavender and candied lemon. First thing we need to do is look at the curd. Mm. So the problem, of course, is that that lemon curd has been sitting around in that mix master, and my biggest concern is, will it be lumpy? Will I be able to put it into the tart shells? And then finally, will it set in time? Mm. Um, I'm about to taste the curd, so... Is it good texture? Yeah, it is a good texture. Oh, yeah, good. Very good. Good texture. It's perfect. It tastes good. It's smooth and silky. It's very, very zesty. There's a lot of lemon juice in there and a lot of lemon zest. There is one cook left in the grand final. Yum. There's $100,000 on the line. We need to go out, you know, all guns are blazing. Remember, we need it to set cake. Baklava into the oven. For dessert, we are serving baklava with Kaimak ice cream and candied walnuts. We're also going to add some fresh orange segments. This is it. We've done everything that we can in the first three courses. It all comes down to dessert. I'm going to work on the pistachio duka, and you're going to segment a thousand oranges. You good? You going to have fun? Yes. You good? You going to work on the same bench? <laughs> Let's work on the same bench. I've gone too sweet sometimes, too sour sometimes. 
but this dessert is going to have to be the one that's just perfect. I want this one to be the $100,000 dessert. Janelle and Monzia. Hello. 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 How many times have you done this recipe? Millions of times. Millions of times. Who's this recipe belongs to? This recipe is actually my mom's recipe. Your mom's recipe, yes. passed down from your grandma. So you know it inside out, and? Yes, I should. She's here. She's here. Mom, baklava, is it going to be? Better than mine. It's going to be the winner. <laughs> winner dessert. This is the last thing that you need to achieve. It better be good. I know. Hey, Mary, how's hey, your lemon Kirsten. tart looking? Hey, it's good. So far, good. so good. How, how are you feeling about the consistency? Um, I'm feeling good about it. You're going to have to cut it, right? Yes, yeah, so it needs yeah. to cool down. And in your experience, this will set firm enough for you to be able to cut through it and it not run? I think so. In 50 minutes? Yeah. Then stop messing around, get it in the fridge. Thank you, Mr Stone. We'll pop this tart in the freezer to give the best chance to set. But first, we're putting it in the oven. I have to get this grill to bake, so I've got to get... Well, the there. grills are on. We've cranked up the grill to the hottest heat the grill's on. They're totally destroying the dessert right now. They put it under the grill. It's ridiculous. It needs to go in our fridge or in our freezer ASAP to set it. Three minutes. Stick to our... Stick to our plan, okay? $100,000 mistake. My heart's racing again. <laughs> this is a $100,000 dessert, Monzi. Yep. So I'm just going to check the buckle and I'm just going to turn it. Yep. So that the other side has some time. Actually, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Mum, a couple more minutes. Turn it around. My mum was like, put it back in. It's actually beautiful. I'm just going to turn it and put it back for a couple minutes. I mean, I've got to listen to my mum. Teams, this is the last dish of my kitchen rules. Make it count. Quick, 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 get that one out. Oh, good on you. They look exactly how we want them to look. I'm going to need to take this whole thing out. Yeah, just be very careful, Kate. I took the tart out of the grill and the panic station started kicking in because there was a big question of whether or not it would set in time. So we're going to put it in the freezer. Right, all the tarts are in, Kate. The time is so tight, we have to be totally focused on the end price. Crossing everything. Woo! Go now, go on! You're almost there, you're doing amazing. Perfect. I'm happy with the colour on the baklava. I yep. just want to pour the cold syrup yep. over. Baklava is actually known to be quite dry sometimes. I think baklava should be soaked in that beautiful sugar syrup. But if you put too much syrup and it's too soggy, it's going to be too sweet. I'm really proud of the baklava. I think that it's perfect. A bit better than mine. Your mum just said it looks better than hers, Nels. You've done it <laughs> proud. <laughs> Woo! Got the lavender out, Kate. Looking Ooh, good. Oh, looks lovely. Gorgeous, Kate. Our tart is sweet and bright, and then there's going to be a sourness that's going to come from the labna. Oh, lovely. So our dessert's got thyme in the labna. Lemon and thyme, they belong together. You see it in savoury dishes, you see it in sweet dishes, and it really pairs well on this mm. dessert dish. I think it does too. One of the risks in using thyme is that it might be too savoury. We don't want to overpower the dish. No, we don't. What are you thinking? I think it's I think that's good. good. Yeah. We have put everything into this cook tonight. It's all of the dishes that we love, all of the techniques. Are you want to try the Oscar? Wait. Don't eat so much. Calm down. Which like one? Like, I taste it. Is... Stop! I taste it. <laughs> Come on, nice. Mm. Wow. It's really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> I feel like for our dessert tonight, I really want to make sure that we've balanced all those flavours. We've got the citrus from the orange, the crunchiness from the baklava, sweetness from the syrup, and of course the savouriness from our ice cream. Awesome. Did amazing! This is it, team's got ten minutes to go. Come on! <laughs> Oh my God, the moment of truth, here it comes. You're going to turn out the tarts. We pull out the tarts from the freezer. You've got it. You're nearly there. Oh. Let me just try this first. We're hoping that they're set. 
because we've got no other option. She's cutting in, she's cutting in. We cut into it. Perfect. After the roller coaster of the grand final, mm. it was kind of that little high spot that I was hoping that we'd make. Yeah. No rushing, no rushing, no rushing. We feel like we've brought it back with our dessert. Easy does it. Easy does it. Come, 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 come. I am so proud to be plating up this dish. I've always wanted to showcase Turkish desserts, and I also wanted to make my family proud. This is our heritage, and I wanted to put that on the plate. Get the ice cream on. Get it out now, because I've got a pistachio over it. After 100 plates, there's just one minute left. Let's go. We're making sure we do everything we can to make this dessert the winning dish. It's nearly not even about the money anymore. It's actually about how we rallied together, how we put everything into this cook and made our family and friends proud. Yeah. That looks beautiful. We had a lot of highs in the kitchen today, but mostly it was towards the end when we both kind of came together. We bonded. We killed it. We had fun. We enjoyed every bit of it. Perfect, 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 perfect. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking! We're going right from the benches. <laughs> We're done. When you finish that last plate and the judges say, time's up, I felt so overwhelmed. I was so proud of us <laughs> that we got through all of this. Uh, we're good, we're good. We achieved this together and we got through this whole competition together. And <laughs> We're not crying, but we're, we're, we're very relieved. We're very we're... emotional. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You're going to pick out the best three. Yeah. <laughs> this dessert, it's the one dish that we both really love and we really agree on the way it should look on the plate and the way it should taste. It could very easily help us get that win over the line. Saves 100 plates, 100% effort. Take a break and we'll see you back for the verdict. <laughs> We've put so much into this cook. It's been so emotional. And of course, the outcome we want is to win. Well, here we go, what the road we've been on. The final course of the competition, the grand final dessert. Should we try the baklava first? Yep. Good idea. It's the last thing that the judges will ever eat from us in this competition. Mm. And it has to be the best thing. Mm. Look at that. Oh, my God, that ice cream is amazing. Baklava's yum. Absolutely delicious. Okay. It's a winning dish. Mm. Oh, yes. Sweet and savoury. Mm. That is so good. Mm. I could stop right now. I mean, the flavours in that ice cream are really special. Mm. The sweetness from the honey, and then that savoury note from the, the cheese. Still, I would have put a little bit more syrup over the top. It's really, it's, it's just, it's an interesting dessert, isn't it? The baklava is not overly sweet. My only complaint is there's not enough ice cream. I wish there was more. But I'm looking at this lemon tart, and it's going to have to be damn good if it wants to beat that back lever. We feel like we're finishing on a high. The tart tastes great, looks great. Mm. I think we can hold our heads up high. Very delicious. You can really taste the lemon. Mm -hmm. The, the pastry, pastry is amazing. I really like this one. Yeah, I, lo I love the sweetness, but I also love the tanginess. The tanginess, yeah. Good it's great. Yeah. 
I think for me, both desserts are neck and neck. What do they say? The proof is in the pudding. Sure is. Look at that. Little snap of the pastry. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that is a wonderful tart. The, the curd is really, really nice. Is it tart enough for you? Yeah. It's funny because you, you get the, the tartness of the lemon, but then the sweet comes back in just to balance it out. Well, the labna is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That's going to be a tough one, this one, huh? I, can't, I don't know if I can split them apart. This is to the white. This is not an easy decision whatsoever. They're very different styles. Well, we asked them to bring it, and they definitely did. Who will be MK or champion? We have put our blood, sweat, and tears into this book. To see all of our family and friends clapping, it is very emotional. I feel sick, but we've come so, so far. Like, let's just absolutely nail Smash it. it. Yeah. I've always said from the beginning, win or lose, we're a team. We take all our mistakes and all our triumphs together, no matter what. We are literally steps away from $100,000. Janelle and Manzir. Kate and Mary, you conquered every challenge that was thrown at you. What an achievement. Four courses, 100 plates of food, the biggest and best menu you've ever produced. Kate and Mary, how daunting was Tuna's challenge for you? We had to dig very deep. Yep. Yeah. I actually hadn't anticipated how emotional we would be. I look at my family, I think my family's really proud. I think they saw, you know, how, how much effort we put into it. We are proud of what we achieved. I Very think we did the we best achieved. we possibly could. Janelle and Monzia, how big was the chance today? It was just, oh my gosh, I've wanted this for so long. I've wanted it for a long time. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> to be here and, you know, even if we don't win, I think this is amazing. And I got to experience it and have my family and my friends watch this. How's the teamwork been tonight? I really did learn to trust Monzi today, more than I've ever had to in my whole life. I saw exactly why I'm here with him, because he was just flawless. Teams, as you know, each of us will give your menu a score out of 10. But first, our thoughts. Kate and Mary, you started your menu with scampi, with smoky chili oil, gazpacho and funnel salad. The scampi was grilled to perfection. Scampi, fennel and chili oil, like they go together like a match made in heaven. The gazpacho, I would have loved a little bit more bite, a little bit more spice, more seasoning. It needed a little bit more lift. Your next dish was a crispy skin salmon with a fragrant Thai sauce and the flatbread. Crispy skin, thick, cooked so perfectly. It was unbelievable. Like, when I split the salmon in half, it was just, like, looking at me going, I'm perfect, eat me now. Oh, like, it was gorgeous. <laughs> that sauce was one of my standouts of this year. 10 out of 10, spot on. Ah, oh, thanks, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Third dish, lamb grains salsa verde. It's always dangerous. When you try and cook one protein two different ways, there's double the chance of getting something wrong. The rack, very successful. Yes, it should have rested a little longer. It was a lovely dish. I love the texture of the grains. It added the dish, and you'd reduce the sauce down that much that it soaked into the grains. It's a very classical dish, but well done. Thanks, Mickey. Thank you. So your final dish, lemon tart with labna and candied lemon. Kate, you almost gave me a heart attack with this <laughs> dish. 
but somehow you pulled it off. It was a lovely dessert and one I'd happily order if I was in a great restaurant tomorrow. The flavor of that lemon curd was perfect. The lavne thought it was a, maybe a little bit too savory, maybe too much thyme. Mm. Okay. I would have loved if you used lemon thyme in there, but what an incredible focus meal. The critique was better than I thought it was gonna be, definitely. I'm feeling a little bit more hopeful now. And I'm actually starting to feel a little bit excited. Hearing Kate and Mary's critique was super hard because how are we ever gonna measure up to that? And now we have to hear our critiques. Janela Monzia, your first dish, grilled adana, katsik, two mac and onion salad, and baslama. There's just the smell only, it was just so inviting. And the spice that was involved into this dish was absolutely delicious. It was a brilliant start. The bread was very generous. I was a bit worried it's gonna to be too dry, but when you had that yogurt with the mint, that's what sort of bound that dish together. I loved it. Your second course, kataifi prawn with halloumi and watermelon salad. That prawn was cooked superb. The texture, the sweetness, it was just the main luxury item on that plate. I love that you served them with the head on, and then I dipped that prawn into the sauce and it was so good. But the watermelon and halloumi salad, cheese, when it's cold, I don't think that's making the most of that cheese. The main course, Sudanese beef and okra stew. Mom's here, and mom, you should both be very proud. Delicious. I think it's the dish of the night for me. The meat was just cook with a little bit of bite still to be able to grab with a beautiful flat little pancake. It's just, it was really, really good. And then that kizra that you made, it was that perfect little vessel to pick something up and you could create these delicious little pockets of mouthfuls. Well done. Final course, baklava, K-Mac ice cream and candy walnuts. The baklava tasted great, but it was a little dry. But then I ate it with the ice cream, which was sensational. I think a very clever dessert. The ice cream, it was savory and sweet. That ice cream stand out. Whatever it is, win or lose, we're so immensely proud of all of our efforts tonight. We came into this thinking we're the underdogs and we're not good enough to be here, but we're deserving to be here just as much as anyone else. Teams, you've heard what we thought of your menus. Now, it's time to score. Kate and Mary, for your delicate and delicious menu, I score you eight out of 10. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks, Curtis. A very thoughtful menu, I score you an eight. Thank you, Colin. Kate and Mary, your menu showed skill and delivered incredible flavor. The score I'm giving you is a nine. Ooh. Thank you, Mino. Thanks, Mino. That gives you a total score of 25 out of 30. Brilliant. Thank you. We're over the moon. We're over the moon. Janelle and Monzia, your menu had heart and soul. I give you a nine. Thank you. Janelle and Monzia, your menu, ballsy and delicious. I score you a nine. Oh, thank you. I loved your food all night long. The score I'm giving you is a nine out of 10. Janelle and Monzir, that's the highest score. And you are the NPR champions and won $100,000. Oh, thank you.
made it. We won. <laughs> we actually won. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from or what you came from, you can achieve anything you want. There is no limit. Kate and Mary, unfortunately, you fell just shy, but you should hold your heads up so high. You not only inspired us, you've inspired the next generation, so well done. I really um, hope that, you know, when Mia watches this one day, that she, she knows that, you know, even though it was tricky and it was hard, it was worthwhile. Janelle and Monzia, what does that mean to you? Oh, this it means everything. It means everything to us. Thank you, Mom, for teaching me everything. <laughs> and thank you for your support. Thank you for, you know, supporting me and Monzi through this journey and always believing in my insane ideas and dreams. And thank you to Monzi's family. I've not met you yet properly, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I've met you now and I'm very, very blessed to be standing here with your son. Monzel forever. Oh, ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Janelle Monse, congratulations. Chase your dreams, guys. The underdogs are now the top dogs.